uh, Leah Bergman's at the University of Dayton. I know Leah and she's a lovely person and she's going to talk about the faculty wish list for rubrics. So Wilma, if you're on, I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, Leah, if you're on, I'm going to give it to you, let you go. We can see your screen. Okay, I should be sharing my camera. It's coming through. Good morning. Good morning. All right, well, I'm very excited to share with you today a custom rubrics feature that we have added to our instance of Sakai. And thanks to our development team, it's been contributed back to the community and it'll be in Sakai 22. But first I wanted to give a shout out to everyone in the community who has worked to get rubrics into Sakai. That was really a missing feature that faculty asked us for years and the ones who've used it so far love it. So thanks to everyone involved in getting that feature added to Sakai. So this is our um, instance of Sakai that I am showing right now. And uh, this feature that we added, the rubrics aggregator, is available anywhere you can grade with a rubric or preview a rubric. For today's demo, I'm going to navigate to the assignments tool and show you that feature there. So here I have an assignment called research paper. I'm going to go into grade and I'm going to click on Joe Smith who has submitted something. If you've used rubrics in the past, you're accustomed to seeing this grading rubric tab. So you can go ahead and go through and evaluate your students' work. But now you'll see there's a student summary and a criteria summary tab that we have added. If you click on the student summary tab, a table appears. On the left-hand column, there are student names. So anyone who has been evaluated already, their names will appear in the list. The subsequent columns are different criteria of the rubric, so content, originality, and so on. On the far right, there is a score column, which is simply the student's total scores. At the bottom, there is an average, and that's the average for each criteria, and then an average for the total score. If we flip to a criteria summary, all of the criteria start collapsed, so you can expand those individually if you want to. Or there's also this expand all feature here that expands all of them. So we have a criteria for content, and then you can see how many students fell into those different ratings. So one for poor, zero fair, three good, and three exceptional. Below each criteria is an average, a median, and a standard deviation for that criteria. So you can continue re reviewing the rubric as you scroll down the page. Now, one thing as we were developing this feature that we wanted to make sure we accounted for was adjusted scores. So if you've used rubrics, you know anywhere you enable rubric grading, there's an option to adjust scores, meaning that you can insert a score manually when a student falls between the two ratings. So for cohesiveness, maybe this student only scored a 19. I'm going to go ahead and enter a 19, which is between good and exceptional. And if I go back to student summary, you'll see that that cohesiveness gets updated to a 19. And if you go to criteria summary and expand everything, a new column appeared, which is called adjusted scores. This tells you how many students have adjusted scores between the two ratings, good and exceptional. You could do the same thing between poor and fair or fair and good. So once we added this feature, we received some really positive feedback from faculty who really use this a lot. But we can't be done yet because it seems like a lot of faculty need to export this data. Maybe they want to share it with their department chair or accrediting bodies. So we're hoping in the future to possibly have a CSV export or PDF export that could be shared with different individuals. Now another feature we would like to add would be sort of like a rubrics dashboard, not to be confused with a dashboard tool. It would basically show you all instances of a rubric throughout the site because we all know that rubrics can be associated with different assignments, different topics, and things like that. So it'd be a one-stop shop where faculty could see a summary of all, rubri all rubrics used across their course site. In addition to that, there are two smaller features we would like to add. The first one is exporting a rubric template. So if I'm teaching Biology 101, I could set up a grading rubric, export it, share it with one of my colleagues who could easily import it into the course site and start grading with it. The second feature request was uh, allowing a download of a PDF of a completed rubric for a student. 
so that the student could you know, download it, save it offline for keeping, or share it with other people, or upload it to a portfolio. So that concludes my lightning talk. I am happy to um, answer any questions you have, but I would like to continue this conversation. I would like to hear from you and know um, what features your faculty have requested for rubrics, or if we're headed in the right direction with our development, if these features sound similar to things that your faculty have requested. The, uh, the, the chat is blowing up, Leah. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm not even sure where to start here. <laughs> of course, there's the usual, um, any chance that this will be contributing, be, being contributed soon? And, yes, uh, they, it should be in 22. Take that. <laughs> so yes. Um, wow, let's see. Boy, they, they still come. They, they, you're getting lots of awesome and, and praise and all that sort of thing. Um, this, is, this is really cool. Let's see here. I'm gonna. I'm scrolling back to just to see what's going on here with all these different. Maybe, maybe David, you. I don't know if you can weigh in, but um, he's saying the add tool, manage groups, and import content shortcuts, which I think is a slightly different topic. Is that right? Leah, you'll probably have to answer because David's microphone probably has to be muted. Okay. I'm not sure what that's referring to. Okay. Well, I'm. I wasn't either. So okay. We'll. Okay. Um, we'll. Okay, uh, let's see. Antonio says, oop, it keeps moving on me here. After grading, if we update through, is the student's grading updated as well? I think the answer to that is yes. Yes, so um, as soon as you click the different cells or enter a score, it's updated on the two summaries, but you'll still have to go through the normal process of releasing it to a student for them to be able to see it. Okay, and Tiffany's asking probably a more challenging question. How does it work if you have some permissions but not others? For example, a TA role at UVA does not have managed groups, but can add tools and import from site. That may be a tough one. I think um, if they have rubric evaluator permission, they have access to the two tabs. So mainly it's instructors and then TAs who would have that rubric evaluator permission. Excellent, okay. Uh, let's see, Alicia is saying, uh, yes, please, for the export and download. I would second awesome. that. <laughs> um, Let's see here. Yeah, David's saying different topic. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, uh, and and Amy's sort of opening a door that's an interesting one. Do we have possibility of two rubrics on the same assignment or for assessment purposes? Ew, that's tough. I, yeah, I think, I'm yeah. not sure. No. <laughs> right. Um, that that's the the idea was sort of to apply a rubric to this particular thing. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. So to my knowledge, you can only apply one rubric to an assignment. But if you had like a same weekly assignment each week, you may have the rubric associated with each of those weekly assignments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Adrian's saying one rubric maps to a, to a tool item. So yeah, that's kind of what I thought here. So, okay, fair enough. And uh, I'll also second the idea that you've proposed about uh, being able to make rubrics more, shall we say, portable. Um, yes. That, that's kind of a challenge. Um, and. But on the other hand, uh, at least we in the LAMP Consortium, when we do share a rubric, then everybody sees it. And so it's uh, it's kind of like uh, the, you either get a penny or you get $1,000 and you're talking about some things in between, which would be really nice. I like that. Okay, anything else you wanna add before we go to Japan? Uh, no, but feel free to reach out to me about um, any questions you have or if there's features you'd like to see. Yeah, I, I know Leah would love to hear from you. So, all right, thanks very much, Leah. So. Thank